So this is part C of experiment 12. Here you're going to be finding the enthalpy of neutralization um, for four different combinations of reactants. So you follow the same procedure for each of the four rungs. So you're going to do this four times. First thing you do, okay, you're going to have two styrofoam cups, cup A and cup B. Weigh the first cup. Um, remember, three places past the decimal. And you're going to transfer 50 milliliters using your graduated cylinder of the first reagent um, from page 136. For example, in run one, that would be two molar hydrochloric acid into cup A, the one you weighed. You're all, then you're going to measure 50 milliliters of the second reagent using your graduated cylinder into cup B. And for run one, that would be 2.02 .02 molar sodium hydroxide. Then, okay, with your partner, you're going to record the temperature in cup A, the first reagent, every 30 seconds for 2 minutes and 30 seconds. Then right at 3 minutes, you won't be recording the temperature, but you're going to be transferring the solution in cup B, the second reagent, into cup A and mix them together. And start recording the temperature again at 3 minutes and 30 seconds and keep recording that until it's clear that the temperature is going to go up and then it should come down again. <clears throat> so you have a clear trend so you can draw a straight line. Um, you keep on recording the temperature. Once you do though, once you see that, that trend, you can stop recording. Um, and you, that's it. You're going to do the same thing for run two, run three, and run four. Now, the calculations. So <clears throat> the idea here is that Q of the reaction is equal to minus Q of the solution. I didn't write that down. But... But because this is occurring at constant pressure, Q is equal to delta H. So really, delta H of reaction, which is what we're looking for, the change in enthalpy for the reaction, the heat of reaction, is equal to minus Q of the solution. But Q of the solution is just mass of the solution times specific heat of the solution times delta T of the solution. Now, to get these, so what you're going to do is you're going to find the mass of the solutions, look up the specific heat, and find measure delta T. Plug them in, you'll get delta H, the heat of reaction. To get the mass of the solution, what you're going to do <clears throat> is you're going to weigh it. You weighed the cup initially, cup A, remember? And you're going to weigh it after the reaction is complete, after everything's cooled down. Um, the difference between the, the cup with the solution and the cup by itself is the mass of the solution, and that goes there. Remember, three places past the decimal. You're going to look up the specific heat of the solution on page 138 in your lab manual. This should be in your table of constants. Um, for runs one and two, that'll be the specific heat of a one molar sodium chloride solution. For run three, it'll be the specific heat of a one molar sodium nitrate solution. And for run four, it'll be the specific heat of a mixture of 0.5 molar sodium chloride and 0.5 molar sodium hydroxide solution. Those numbers are all on page 138. Just look them up, put them in your table of constants. Um, for the delta T of solution, it's final minus initial, T final minus T initial. And you're going to find both of these from your graph that you're going to make, just like you did in part A. <clears throat> so here you're going to plot temperature versus time. Um, and extrapolate the line over to the time of mixing. Find your initial temperature. Um, and then as the... Um, <clears throat> let's go back here. So here, just like in part A, you're going to plot temperature versus time. The blue line is the temperature of the solution right here. Um, before you added the second reagent, extrapolate to the time of mixing. The red line 
the green line here is the best straight line through the <clears throat> the points after mixing where it where you extrapolate it and where it crosses the red line that will be the final temperature t final minus t initial all right so you got the heat of reaction you're going to do this calculation for each of the runs for run one run two run three and run four and also you're going to calculate the molar heat of reaction delta h molar for each of the four runs it's just going to be the number you got up here the heat of reaction divided by the number of moles of the acid um, in run one the acid is a two molar hydrochloric in run two it's also two molar hydrochloric in run one it's two molar nitric and run i mean run three it's two molar nitric and run four, it's one molar hydrochloric. Um, to get the moles of the acid, it's just the volume times polarity. Okay, so V times M equals N. So for runs one, two, and three, it's 50 mils, so 0 0.0500 liters, and it's all 2.00 molar moles per liter. It gets 0.1 moles for runs one, two, and three for the moles of the acid. And for run four, it's 50 mils, 0 0.0500 liters times one mole per liter is 0 0.0500 moles. Plug it in here, do the division, get the molar heat of neutralization. And that's it, you'll be done.